These are all of the smutty fantasies that I'm planning to read for my romanciathon. Hey everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, I'm hosting a readathon called Romanticy a Thon from September 17th to September 27th. And the theme of the readathon is to just read as much fantasy romance as possible. If you don't know, fantasy romance is a subgenre of both fantasy and romance where it's set in a fantasy world but it's really like a romance story and the story focuses a lot on the main characters and their relationship their love story and it may or may not have some extra little spice some of them could just be mild to some of them being very very steamy i wanted to organize this readathon because i've really just loved fantasy romance ever since i started reading it about a year ago it started when i read from blood and ash by jennifer l armitra and i was like wow i need more books like this in my life and I've been releasing a series on my channel all year long of fantasy romance books that I want to read so please check out. There are three videos out with a bunch of recommendations for fantasy romances um, and as well in my next video for this readathon I go into different fantasy romance books that fit each prompt. Now I'm going to be telling you guys what I plan on reading for my readathon. So there are five prompts total and I plan on reading all five of these books in 10 days I think it's doable because I usually fly through fantasy romances. I have three of these books physically and two I will be reading on my kindle. The five prompts are Faye, Enemies to Lovers, Arranged Marriage, Character on the Cover, and Royalty. It's so very simple, very easy to fit different things into. You can combine prompts, kind of do whatever you want. Um, I have a bunch of infographics up on my Instagram as well as I made a Twitter for the readathon specifically where you can find for more information there. I've been highlighting different books that you can read for this readathon on there as well. So without further ado, let me get into what I'm reading for this readathon. First up is the first prompt, which is a Fae book. There are so many Fae books, but the one that I decided to go with for this one is A Court of Honey and Ash by Shannon Mayer and Kelly St. Clair. And I'll be reading this one on my Kindle. Ali is a half-human, half-fae orphan who has been trained to fight and fear the power of the Underhill. She's secretly in love with a man that doesn't want her. When the Underhill, the ancestral home of the fae, shatters, making it impossible for any fae to enter, Ali is the only one who knows who did it. A secret that may be the death of her if she does nothing. A brutal madness spreads to the fae as they lose their connection to the Underhill, and Ali's only choice is to leave everything that she's ever known and go on the run. Unless she figures out how magic that has existed since the dawn of time was broken with a single touch. So she must find the riddle of the Underhill shattering, even if that means she's hunted by the man she loved once upon a time. Um, yes, I know this title is very similar to other popular titles. I don't really care. I am here for all like the goodness and it seems like a really interesting plot. I am intrigued to see what this riddle is going to be and I'm interested in reading this book. This is the Honey and Ice trilogy. This first one came out in July. The sequel is gonna come out in September. Actually, the last day of this readathon. The next prompt is Enemies to Lovers, everyone's favorite. For that prompt, I've chosen to read The Savage and the Swan by Ella Fields. Something about this blurb just drew me in that I felt the need to physically buy this book when I saw it. So I definitely want to prioritize reading this during this readathon. The King of Wolves is more beast than man, more tyrant than king, and so much more than he seems. He has been raised to avenge his murdered parents and trained and conditioned until nothing else but violence lives in his mind. For four years, Opal has done all that she can to help her kingdom while they are facing the threat of the Wolf King, which is hardly anything at all. As the only heir to the Gracewood line, she's been locked in the tower and regaled to menial tasks that would keep her and her secrets safe. A chance to do more arrives when she overhears her parents' plans for the future and decides to breach the castle walls. She flees and unknowingly races into a fate that she has been so desperately trying to avoid. By the time she saw the Wolf King coming, it was far too late. Okay, and then this last paragraph I want to read directly. The stars had mapped out our destiny, but it didn't matter what they or my heart wanted. I refused to see the enigmatic male, the heartless lost boy with a soul beneath the flesh of a monster. Just sounds cool. And I've also heard that this wolf king is like a winged wolf king. That's very cool and exciting. And so this just seems like such a good enemies to lovers. Like they are enemies. And apparently this... Uh, Antihero is like the most morally gray guy ever and like look at this chapter headings. Ugh, I love I love that indie books just tend to have like these really beautiful touches to them in their physical forms. 
it's amazing the third prompt is marriage and for this one i'm going with an arranged marriage and the book that i'll be reading is radiance by grace draven and i'll be reading this one like this is the first in the wraith kings series and i feel like grace draven is like a staple author in the fantasy and romance genre she's a lot of books that are very popular and i have yet to read her so i really feel like i need it to get on it and start reading her work. This one is a friends to lovers romance. Brishan is a prince of the Kai, but he is a prince of no value. He has lived content as the non-essential spare heir to a throne secured many times over. A trade and political alliance between the human kingdom of Gaur and the Kai kingdom of Bast Haradis requires that he marries a human woman to seal the deal. Always a dutiful son, he agrees to the marriage and discovers the bride is just as ugly as he feared. The noble woman of no importance is Ildiko, niece of the Gowry king, and has always known that her worst to the royal family lay in a strategic marriage. Resigned to her fate, she's horrified to learn that her intended groom is not just some foreign aristocrat, but the prince of a people that are not human. Bound to her new husband, Ildiko will leave behind everything that she's ever known to embrace a man shrouded in darkness but with a soul of light. I just think it's like hilarious that these two characters, like since they're different species, think that the other one is like really ugly. <laughs> so I'm interested to see how this is gonna play out in a book. It kind of gives me like Ice Planet Barbarian vibes, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and so yeah, I've just been really excited to read Grace Draven. I think that that book is part of a duology like the wraith kings duology i think there's two and she has just like so many other books that are like really popular like um master of crows phoenix unbound like when i've been researching fantasy romances she always pops up with like a bunch of books that are really popular the next prompt is character art on the cover and for this one i'm going with deal with the elf king by elise kova because look at them this character art is so beautiful i also love the character art for dance with the fake prince which is the second one in this world this is the married to magic series so you could definitely also use this one or the follow-up book for the marriage prompt because it is the married to magic series also i listed this one as a fae book in my like readathon announcement video not realizing it says elf elf king I don't know. The elves come for two things, war and wives. In both cases, they come for death. 3,000 years ago, humans were hunted by powerful races with wild magic until the treaty was formed. Now, for centuries, the elves have taken a young woman from Luella's village to be their human queen. To be chosen is a mark of death, and as 19 years old, Luella is happy that that opportunity has passed. Instead, she's dedicated her life to studying herbology and becoming the town's only healer. That is, until the elf king unexpectedly arrives. For her. Everything Luella has been taught about her life and herself was a lie. Taken to a land filled with wild magic, she is forced to become a queen to a cold yet blisteringly handsome elf king. Once there, she learns about a dying world that only she can save. The magical land of Midscape tugs on her heart. Her home and her people tug on another. But what will truly break her is a passion that she never wanted. It just sounds so good and I love the aspect of like Luella being the only one that can save these people and it just sounds awesome like there's just such cool art within this book too like it's just it's so pretty and like so well produced <laughs> like the dedication is for those who need a break and a second glass of wine table of contents the map like this is just the book you want to sink your teeth into like look at those chapter headings like i love it so much like, i just feel like there's so much effort put into some of these indie books and like they're just so beautiful and i would be remiss not to show the naked cover because literally stunning I feel like Elise Kova is an author that once I start reading her, I'm going to become obsessed with her because she also has her Air Awakens series and um, A Trial of Sorcerers. And I feel like I'm just going to read all of her stuff and be like, oh no, I need it all. That's how it's going to go. Okay, and last but not least, for the last prompt, which is royalty, I'm going to be reading Guild by Raven Kennedy. So Guild is a book that has been recently like blowing up on TikTok and I've always wanted to read it. So this is the perfect chance. This is a King of Midas retelling of sorts, and I've heard it's like can be kind of dark, but it's really amazing. So, and then you look at the cover, and like if you look at the chapter headings, look at that. Look at this like cover page, beautiful. 
gold gold floors gold walls gold furniture gold clothes in king minus's castle built at the top of the frozen mountains everything is made of gold even Arun. king midas rescued her dug her out of the slums and placed her on a pedestal she's called his precious his favored the woman that he gold touched to show everyone that she belongs to him to show how powerful it is he gave her protection and she gave him her heart and even though she doesn't leave the confines of the palace she's safe until war comes to the kingdom and a deal is struck suddenly Orin's trust is broken her love is challenged and she realizes that everything she thought she knew about Midas might be wrong because the bars that she is kept within no matter how gilded they are are still a cage but the monsters on the other side might just make her wish that she never left. I am so excited for this one and I will probably be picking up the other ones after I finish this because I just feel like I'm going to binge the whole series. And I feel like these books that I have picked up for this race are going to like just lead me down a fantasy romance like spiral. So please let me know down below in the comments if you are going to be joining the readathon and if so what books you are planning on reading for the duration of the 10 days. I'm so so excited about this readathon and thank you everyone that commented on my last video saying that they were going to participate and I just can't wait and I think it's just going to be really fun. So with that, have some fun, read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.